Hello everyone and welcome to Good Knit Kisses. I'm sorry, I have got my speaker off here. Hold on one moment. Let me get this plugged in here. All right. I hope you guys are doing well today. I'm um, sorry, I had a little difficulty this morning. Hopefully the screen looks good. I had to put a diffuser on because um, it is super bright and pretty today. So I hope you are having a wonderful day and enjoying the day. Hopefully you've got some good weather as well. Um, like mine's a little bit bright on me, but um, we'll, we'll get by. Uh, please tell me where you're from. And uh, in the meantime, I'm Good Knit Kisses, uh, Kristen at Good Knit Kisses. And of course, I teach how to loom knit, needle knit, and crochet. And today is Crochet Thursday at GKK. I know, it kind of rhymes. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, yeah, I just, I teach how to um, uh, do a lot of, um, a lot of loom knitting, but I have ton done some basics on crochet. And also on my uh, YouTube channel, if you are not subscribed, I hope you do. Um, just go to youtube.com slash goodknitkisses and subscribe. And I have some uh, handy playlists. Um, some of the basic things, actually my buddy, Mikey, uh, Michael Selleck over at the Crochet Crowd. Uh, he and I have flipped around some videos for each other. I have some loom knitting videos on his channel and he has some uh, crochet on mine and so I've got a nice playlist of that. Hey Ellie, good to see you again, South Jersey. <laughs> You're having a great weather day too? Awesome. I know there's like no clouds and I have these big windows out here that I would love to afford plantation shutters for but mama don't have the cash so <laughs> you're getting a blaring light here. <laughs> so uh, good to see you. Um, yeah, so um, anyway, I was saying that Michael Selleck at the Crochet Crowd, he actually has some videos on my YouTube channel. And of course, I have some on his, but he has some great crochet videos. And then I've got some as well. Um, I did a blanket called the Marshmallow Crochet Baby Blanket, which uh, several people have just really loved over the last couple of years. And then I ended up creating a hat pattern to go along with it and uh, you can do it with or without this little frilly brim edge and um, it's kind of a banded pattern and if you go on goodknitkisses.com or you go onto my YouTube site you'll be able to see that I have a crochet along video and then of course I have the free pattern on the blog so that's the marshmallow crochet baby blanket uh, and then all my free patterns. Beautiful day in Dallas. Yeah. Hey, Chelsea. I'm over in the Fort Worth side, so it's pretty over here too. So nice. <laughs> um, yeah. You like Michael's videos? He's fantastic. I love him. He's, he's really a great guy and he, how he presents himself online is exactly how he is in his personal life. Just a fantastic person. So he's got lots of wonderful crochet videos. Um, I've actually got to do a retreat with him and also another crochet artist, Beth. Um, she also goes by Elizabeth Ham. So Beth Ham. And she has a channel. Um, she's Crochet A Chunk Full of Fun is her business name. But many people know her as Beth in Texas one, because if you squish it all together with the number one in Texas is TX, uh, that is her channel name. So if you look her up, just look up Beth Ham and um, you can find her crochet videos. And she's been on. Yeah. Hey, Debbie, you were at the retreat. I know you. You're awesome. I'm glad you're here. Um, yeah, we did that in the fall of 2012 and uh, just really enjoyed ourselves. It was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of fun though, because <laughs> we planned our own retreat and we didn't have a whole team. We were the team. So, um, but they did crochet and I did loom knitting and it was fantastic. Um, Red Heart sponsored the yarn and, um, and the hooks I think were, I'm trying to remember, um, if there was simplicity, but they gave us some bags and then we did, um, I did some loom knitting classes and knitting board had sponsored those. Um, those looms, those, uh, they were the 28 inch, uh, I'm sorry, the 18 inch all in one looms. So, um, but anyway, for crochet, I do have playlists on my channel and, uh, whenever you go to a YouTube channel, go to youtube.com YouTube slash the name of the, the person or the channel, if you know it. And, um, but even if you find one of their videos, if you will click on either on your phone or on your, uh, or mobile device 
or on a desktop or laptop, you can click on them and then it'll go to their main channel page. And uh, there's actually a lower search area and it's written where it says playlists and then a little search area and you can search just their videos or you can hit playlists and see all their playlists and you still have to expand it. But that's a great thing. So like if you find a crochet person that you love, um, you can actually go and grab their videos and even create your own playlists. And so when you find something that's interesting to you, make your own playlist. Um, I talked about that on Monday. So check out Monday's broadcast, uh, the past, what was that? August 1st. <laughs> um, I talked about that on that broadcast. Hey, Nancy, Montana. Hey, awesome. I'm glad you're here. And I know you from my Facebook group. And, um, but yeah, so if you'll check out that broadcast uh, from Monday, and then I actually showed my computer and how to make a playlist for yourself. And, um, I know many people know how, but other people don't. And if you don't have a YouTube account, I encourage you to get one. Or if you have a Gmail, you basically already have the access to do that. It actually makes your life so much easier. And here's a quick tip. Hey, Jackie, good morning. Good morning in Ohio. I'm so glad you're here. Um, but yeah, if you, if you don't have a YouTube account, get one, get one because, um, it's really great for keeping up. And did you know that you can look at your history and you can, um, remove something from your history? Say you watched a video and you're like, that was not helpful to me. You can click to remove it from your history. You can clear your whole history, but I would recommend you leave it on there. Um, also YouTube, here's another little tip. Uh, YouTube's analytics is set up so like if you have something in your history, um, like say you have lots of crochet stuff and yarn stuff, but then maybe you have something that you watched for a review for a movie or something like that or like a technology tool, maybe your husband or whoever, or spouse or partner hops on and searches for something really off the wall and all of a sudden your recommended videos are like kind of strange. Um, that's because it's looking at your history and you can actually just, instead of deleting your whole history, you can actually click on, um, remove that video from the history and then YouTube gets smarter and it's like, oh, okay. They don't want to see that kind of video. Maybe that was an oops thing. So, um, and it's also good if you have your devices hooked up, like we have Apple products. So I have my iPhone and then I have two iPads that are old that I let the kids use every now and then, which I put passwords on. And so if they get on YouTube, which they're not supposed to, but if they get on there, I can actually see the history. So that's a nice little tip. And they don't, they're too young to understand that yet. So I can actually see what they watched, which they've never watched anything terrible. But one of them was watching something that I was like, well, maybe we shouldn't watch that just yet. So anyway, <laughs> um, so that is a little bit of media tips and I'm going to really go into a lot of that tomorrow. Tomorrow is Social Media Friday and for you guys just joining me, I'm going, again, I'm Kristen at Good Knit Kisses and um, <clears throat> oh, your hubby made a radio playlist. Oh yeah, for antique radios. How fun is that? Oh, like real antique, like like the, the old, yeah, that's really cool. Um, Anyway, so I'm going to give y'all kind of the lineup, just so you know, this is the first week of me doing live videos every day. I'm going to continue doing this. And um, so Mondays is Q&A Monday with me, and you can ask me different questions that can kind of involve anything. So um, they can be, they can be personal in nature too. Um, I just, you know, I don't answer things about my kids and stuff. Ooh, the oldest is 1928. How cool. So cool. You'll have to send me a picture of one that is your favorite. Um, so the, um, okay, so crochet, my, I mean, I'm sorry, Mondays is Q&A, Tuesday is loom knitting, Wednesday is knitting and yarn, and like for needles and then yarn, and crochet Wednesday, or crochet Thursday, and then Friday is going to be social media day, and then anything just for fun on the weekends, if I've got something encouraging or to show you like a, a quickie review of something. So, um, that's, what's going to be coming up. So for today, we're talking about crochet and, um, I've talked about how you find the playlists. I do have a crochet playlist for beginners and some crochet alongs on the channel. And I'm not here just to promote my channel. I just want you to know that I do have those and there are other people who do them. Um, also another great, uh, YouTube channel is Yolanda, excuse me, <laughs> my throat's catching, uh, Yolanda, she is in. Uh, California and she does English and Spanish language videos <clears throat> and she is with all crafts channel 
So if you want to check out her videos as well, she's a, I forget what you call it, Abuelito, Abuelita. She's a grandmother, and, um, but she teaches and she's outstanding. i uh, been featured by YouTube recently and a uh, really great person. Uh, we also have, um, so we talked about Mikey at the Crochet Crowd. Also check out Beth at Beth in Texas 1, TX, and then the number 1. And then All Crafts Channel. Um, Very Pink Knits that I brought up yesterday who does knitting. She also has um, crochet for knitters specifically. Like I think the way she talks her, I haven't really like watched them all the way through. But I do love her videos. She is a master knitter. I don't think. She is a master at crochet. I don't think she's done the testing for that or whatever. But um, anyway, but she has some stuff for that. And then, like I said, I don't have as many, but I'm sure I will be building on that. Um, the Marshmallow Crochet Baby Blanket uh, pattern is free on my blog that I do. And I like to use this Bernat Baby Yarn. Anybody love this, hate this? Y'all use this? <laughs> So, um, Bernat also has a blanket yarn and, um, I'll be help. uh, there'll be a mystery stitch along coming up in September. And, uh, this is the yarn here. It's like nice and squishy. It's like a super big ball, which I absolutely love. Um, right now what I'm working on is, um, I've been working on it. It's super delayed. Um, is actually trying to make out of my hat, um, making it into a cocoon, a larger cocoon. I actually had someone not just wanting a cocoon, but they wanted one for, um, an adult. Oh, use that for a baby blanket. Yeah. Oh, and then they're, they're just Bernat blanket yarn is, um, like kind of some more, um, less baby yarn colors and it's more like adult <laughs> kind of colors. Oh, it's in your stash and haven't used it. I love it for crochet. I think it works really well for crochet. It does well knitting with needles. I don't like it as much on the loom. It's, it functions more like a, um, it's really, because it's got this middle center thread, it, it's more like a, a boucle type. Uh, so it has that center thin line and then, but it's, it seems to be more reinforced. Um, but anyway, so I, but I do like it for crochet. It works really well um it so anyway this is what the crochet baby blanket uh, the marshmallow one is it has this textured stitch here do you see how it bumps out so it's not a bobble but it kind of has the appearance of a bobble and then depending upon how big your hook is you um you may get you know kind of some holes through it or whatever you can also make the 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 hook size go down and then it'll be even more squishier and dense so it can be a very dense um, uh, yarn to work with, if depending upon your hook size and your um, your stitch, your or your stitches. Um, this one uses um, single crochet and double, and of course your chain foundation, and then it just repeats, repeats. So it's really easy. Thank you, Vani. Welcome. I didn't see you come in. <laughs> so um, anyway, now this would be like a massive hat for me. Let Joe want me to try it on. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd be wearing that. It looks like one of those, um, uh, like when you get your hair done in the salon. Anyway, whoo, I got something in my hair from that. <laughs> so anyway, this is, um, this is me trying to make it into a cocoon. And um, it, it really, I have a pattern for the hat, like a baby hat. And then someone wanted a adult coon, so, cocoon. So that's what's going on. And then here's something. Um, I use these removable stitch markers. Um, do you guys use these? Um, it's like an earring that opens up. Let's see if I can, I don't want to mark it like that. And I love these. You can make these yourself. Um, I bought this from someone else. So whenever you make them though, you got to be careful when you uh, trim and cut it and, um, make sure that there is no snagging because you don't want to mess your project up, do you? So I like those, and so I can move it like every time I, you know, end row or start row, I'm trying to count different ways, I might move this, um, um, move this around. Um, and of course you can use it to, you know, for the end of your stitch, like if you have a, so I did not put one here, which I should have. Usually I just, I keep the loop pretty big, but you can put it on 
here and this is where I had ended and I'm not really finished. So um, I like those. I have a little jar I wish I could show you, but it's like a little tiny, tiny jar um, that flips and closes. Um, <clears throat> But I got that at Stitches, uh, Texas, last fall. It was the first time they were here. Uh, if anybody is in a Dallas area or near enough to drive, Stitches was really fun. But I'll tell you what, I, um, and their classes are expensive. But um, it was worth going to for the first time, and I will go again. Um, in the fall, though, if you are in the area, DFW Fiberfest is a great place to go, especially to get yarn and stuff. They also have classes if you want to learn crochet or knitting. Um, they have those. They have um, spinning classes as well. Look at me. I've got fiber in my hair. Okay, let's see. Let me moving on. Um, other thing, who's who's new to crochet? Is there anyone new to crochet? If you'll type new or if you'll type like what your level is, that will actually help me in um, how I'm broadcasting today because this is new for doing the crochet Thursday. So I want to see who everyone is and what you're interested in. Um, while I'm waiting, y'all be sure and type, hit, hit right new meet. You want to meet? <laughs> are you new to crochet or are you intermediate or beginner? Okay. Beginner. Okay. Me too, Bonnie. Okay. Um, new. All right, Chelsea. Welcome. After this time, you're still a beginner. Debbie, that's okay. That's totally okay. I know. So we met, we met four years ago and you were just learning then, but you know what? I think it depends on um, how often you can do it. If you have someone with you and sometimes, you know, like you can do a lot of amazing things in the beginner stuff. So you don't really have to branch out. Nobody tells you, you have to do that? So if you don't want to, then that's fine. Oh, you're interested in wire crochet. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I have a couple of videos on wire crochet jewelry and I happen to not be wearing one of my necklaces today. Um, I wish I had one out to show you, but yeah, once you can do a chain stitch, really, you can do that wire jewelry. The most expense is like buying the tools. Um, you can get some really good prices on tools at Michael's that includes like kind of an all in one tool that might have like all three things in one or cheaper like versions of the different tools. And then I show all the things that you need in those videos. Um, but I could do like a broadcast on wire crochet jewelry one day, if you guys would like. Um, what gauge? Oh, to buy. Okay. For wire jewelry. We can just talk about that. I'll, I'll bring this up in a second. Um, so wire crochet jewelry, you will, um, you'll want, okay. It depends on what's commonly available in your store. Cause I prefer 24 gauge wire non-tarnishing wire but what i find that i have to use more often is 26 gauge wire now the higher the number the more um, flexible the wire is going to be so um it's not about the stitches and like you know like when we were talking about yarn it's a different thing so hey Lori lynette woo! she okay i have to give props hang on a second gotta give her props live on here Lori is one of my best commenters on um, YouTube. I love to see her comments and I don't catch, oh, that must be Carol or Nikki on here and their po or, or Louisa and posting that wire crochet tutorial. So thank you. Um, but Lori, man, I love seeing your comments and I don't see everybody's comments and stuff, but for some reason I catch hers like real fast and I see it. And um, I don't know if that's an algorithm thing, but anyway, I see it. I love it. Mwah. Big hugs. Okay. So, <laughs> hey, Judy. And Judy is a, um, I just saw you, Judy. Uh, Judy is another retreat person. We had about sorry, 30 people, 32 people at this retreat. It was really fun. So um, maybe we'll do it again. Okay. Sorry. ADD. Squirrel. Back to wire jewelry. You asked me. Okay. So 24 gauge is what I prefer. 26 gauge is what I usually find. And I like to use the silver non-tarnishing wire. Um, there are different silver ones, but you need to really read your materials if it's non-tarnishing or not. Because if it is not non-tarnishing, you are not going to be happy with me. I'm telling you. So, um, okay. I, I have my tools like way on the other side of the, like they're, they're way far away. My daughter and I on Tuesday spent most of the day actually making wire jewelry and she loved love, love, love making the earrings. 
um, she made a, one of the bracelets and, um, she was helping with the necklace and stuff, but man, oh man, she loved those earrings and that didn't require any crochet. Um, also, um, tiger tail, if I'm saying that right, there is a tiger tail, um, type of wire. And you know what? When I first started making this jewelry, tiger tail, this real small thing of it, I don't think it's actually cheap, but it came in the kit that I bought, never used it. Just the other day, she's like, I need something. So I gave her that to play with. Man, it made the cutest crochet bracelet. All you're doing is using chains and it like, man, why don't I have this? I wish I had it right here, but I'll, I'll show y'all next week. Do y'all want to do a wire crochet tutorial next week? Anybody? We could do one next week impromptu. Um, but anyway, she did just a simple chain and then um, I'll have to figure out the proper way to tie it. I'm telling you, it's brand new to me. But the tiger tail, oh good, thumbs ups on those. And some hearts, come on man, give me some hearts. Um, but the uh, but the tiger tail looked really cool. And it kind of made a little bit of a stretchy, you do Lori, yay! It kind of made a stretchy bracelet too. I loved it, it was so cute. Man, I want her to make me a bunch more. So what I need to do is I need to check out tiger tail. <laughs> All right, Judy. All right, you two. Hey, Tammy, welcome. I'm glad you're here. So, um, yeah, so the tiger tail. Okay. So the tools that I use, I use a round, um, needle nose plier. Okay. You'll just go to the jewelry section of and Hobby Lobby. Okay. By the way, Hobby Lobby, do, uh, if you don't have a Hobby Lobby, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you do have a Hobby Lobby, in the jewelry section, it's been a while since I bought supplies because the last time I did a bunch of jewelry stuff, I stopped for a while when I was making videos for Looming. But um, when I was doing it, a lot, I have a lot of supplies that I had stocked up on, so I'm using those. So, but Hobby Lobby would rotate, like they would do this kind of an inventory sale for jewelry and then like for two weeks. And then the next two weeks, they did this kind of inventory sale. Like, so one time they would sell like notions and wire. And then, um, or, well, actually, I'm sorry. Notions is the word in, in, um, uh, needles and stuff and handicrafts, but the jewelry, they call it findings. So the little thing that sticks your bracelets together and on all that stuff, those are called findings. So if you're new to it, that's the word you use. So findings, yeah, Hobby Lobby can be dangerous. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the findings are usually on one side of the, walkway and sometimes there's like two aisles so anyway one side is usually findings the other side is usually beads and then there's more beads on each side so and then beads could be on sale or a certain vendor so like they flip-flop their sales so you could spend two weeks or three weeks trying to get all your supplies but you know so you can make a better purchase right because they end up doing like these half off sales that are outstanding right and um, I like to kind of look every time I go or when I'm doing all the jewelry stuff, I go on the end caps and look for the clearance beads and stuff. Because when you're first starting, I mean, you want to go with something that's not going to be as expensive, right? Because you're like, well, am I going to like it? You know, but I wouldn't suggest buying a ton of stuff when you start because you want to make sure you like it. And also, I will tell you, okay, so one of my three strand bracelets can take me 45 minutes um, I actually can be, it can take me a lot less now, but to make it from start to finish when I first was beginning, but that's not counting the time it took for me to pick out the beads and set up what I wanted to do. Does that make sense? So like if you're picking your beads, it can take a while. You have a Hobby Lobby in your neck of the woods and you worked at Joann's and AC Moore. Oh, your wrecking ball. Um, did y'all know I, I wrote a parody song to Wrecking Ball? It's called Ball of Yarn. Have I sang it for y'all yet? I'm waiting on this guy to do the mastering of it. Like we recorded it, like seriously recorded it. And um, anyway, I'll sing it for you one day <laughs> or play it. Um, anyway, so yeah, so, um, so round needle nose pliers, cutters, I'm seeing the thumbs up and the hearts. I'm like, are y'all wanting me to sing it? Or are you just happy I did it? Um, okay. Cutters. And then there's a crimper. 
Okay, so there's three separate tools. However, you can buy the three-in-one tool and it has the, the pliers and the, crimp, the crimper and then the cutter. But man, that thing can be dangerous because if you're trying to crimp something and you accidentally cut, you're messed up because it can wreck your, your work. So you have to be careful with it. So that's why it's nice to have the three. Crimping tool, yes. What it does is like, so you can actually buy crimping beads. So say, let's say you're going to make an earring. Um, and then you make, um, oh, and earrings, if you want one that kind of dangles, they're these ones that look like a nail. Um, so it's got like a flat head on it. And then, a, a, so it's like this, say this is a round flat thing. Okay, it's sitting here. This is the plane level. And then it's got a big long stick. And then they make them of various lengths. And then you load your your um, beads onto it and then you can get a crimping bead and then you put the crimping bead on and you use your crimper and then you squish it and then it won't move it won't make the beads won't move around on you and then you can bend the end of it and cut it off so you're making a loop and then you stick your little earring part into it you can actually make and bend your own earring part too I think it's called a head pin thank you Laura it's like when I was doing it, like in 2010, I was making a bunch of jewelry and like I knew all the lingo and stuff, but it's been too long since I was just like in it. So I have all my supplies over there and they're not anywhere near me, but someone mentioned the jewelry. I appreciate it, Laura. If I have messed some terms up, somebody please tell me. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so what else? What else? So I told you about the gauge wire. Um, you know what I do? Um, I, I have um, I have wear. I used to sell it. And I had like the rock, rockport, rockabye, rock, whatever. Anyway, I had this one particular one that's like kind of just a square. It's short. I keep most of my little tools in there. And so I put the wire and I put all the, um, all the tools. And then um, uh, I put my um, findings in and just seal that up. And so that's a nice like hard case. So like if it slams, it doesn't bust it. And it's not a, it's like a harder plastic. So it doesn't, I don't have to worry about it. It's not like in one of those, um, toss away plastics or something. Um, it doesn't wreck it. So, um, even like the ones that are meant for crafty crafters and stuff, um, it, 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 it won't dent it. So, um, anyway, that's what I use. And then, um, the, uh, uh, my beads and stuff like that, then I put them in like individual, you know, bead containers. We call your term Christianisms. <laughs> Are they? Yeah, I have funny terms for stuff, I guess. <laughs> I don't I don't try and be pretentious about the name. I mean, if I know the name, I really try and tell you guys, but sorry. <laughs> um, I do my best. So let's see. What else do you need? Laura. Laura's a jewelry person. Maybe Laura's telling it can remind me if I'm thinking of if I'm forgetting something. Somebody tell me. Oh, um, I got a mat. Um, you don't have to buy anything expensive. In fact, you could just use like a, a little poofy cloth. Like if you have a, a cloth, that's kind of like this sort of texture, you know, or a blanket, like a, or a scrap, you can lay that down and then lay out your beads, you know, basically so they don't roll around on you. That's really what that's for. And then I would actually recommend getting like a, a bowl to put next to you that you can throw your wire into because that puppy is going to go all over the place. Um, mine falls on the floor. It, it flies away when I'm just going along. I mean, it's, it's irritating. So the big key thing when you're making wire jewelry is load your beads first. So I, I lay out what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay out the line. Like say I'm going to put three strands together. I'm going to braid them. Um, I lay out all the strands exactly how I want them. And then I load one strand onto the, the wire. And then I crochet, cut it, load more on crochet and cut it. Now you could preload them all on in order, but you would need like a big marker bead. Like if you're just trying to churn it out and go fast, you could like get like some goofball bead, like, if everything's gray, you could grab an orange and put that on there. You wouldn't want to put a stitch marker on there because that would like go over the beads. So if you're really trying to show it as a separate area, you could do that. So there's a little tip for you. Um, one spool, it's about 30 yards. I want to say has done three neck, uh, I'm sorry, two necklaces for me. 
the type of necklace that I've done. Now, if you want one strand, you can make six necklaces from it. Yay, bonus, right? So if you're trying to make them and sell them, um, one of these strands would be beautiful, um, simple. Like if you're trying to sell them for a craft fair, that'd be a way to go. Um, also you can make bracelets out of them. So if you're trying to save on the craft stuff and you really like it, you can make it less beads. The findings are going to still be the same thing, the part that connects them together, but you'll, you'll do less beads and less, um, uh, less wire to do a bracelet. Um, but make sure of your bracelet size before you go making it, you know, um, too long or too short. So, um, start, um, researching those links that that you want to use um i have a big wrist so when i go to a craft fair i can never find anything i mean i say never like i think one time in 40 years of going to craft fairs have i ever found a bracelet that really fit me and i bought it so um little tip for y'all who sell your stuff at fairs or um things like that um or flea markets or um Anyway, whatever you guys call it, if you have a booth, um, make a few, not a bunch, make a few larger ones and like put them separate and say that they're, you know, for a larger wrist. Um, I would do it. I would, I would market it that way if it was me. But anyway, hopefully that's a good tip for you. Do you guys have any questions for me? Um, I'm going to pull out something else. Are y'all laughing? I'm so animated. Sorry. That's me. Eight inch bracelet. Yeah. Mine may, may even be an eight and a half. Oh, I was going to grab a tape measure and this is what I pulled out. <laughs> I have a bowl right next to me. I'm like, Oh, my tape measure. It's a pom pom maker, not a tape measure. Um, okay. Apparently I don't have a, have one. Oh, here's something I probably won't teach on it. Cause I lucked out at this, but y'all look at this. Just what, since we're talking about jewelry, just for a second. Do you like this? This is a ring that I made. It's one big bead. It's kind of obnoxious, but actually several people have enjoyed it. So, um, my grandfather had a, um, a, uh, ring maker. I don't know what they're called. Let's see. Oh, I thought it, maybe I had it down here. He, um, used to do like metal working and stuff. And so he did it, he made them for companies and apparently he made a mess up on the first one. He did have this line down it. Um, and so he had it in his tools and so he gave it to me. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Me, 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 me. Isn't that cool? So I don't know how close up it'll focus for you. Let's see if I can get it to tap and focus here. Anyway, so it's just kind of an asymmetrical thing. And then I wrapped it around, but I'll tell you what, I tried to make another one and, um, let me see if it's in my little craft drawer. Hold on. I tried to make another one. Oh, here it is. I was pulling it apart <laughs> and it's not non-tarnishing wire. So uh, this is me trying to pull apart a bad mistake. <laughs> so you see how the wire is tarnished and had this coating on it and I was like oh there's a coating on it and I tried to pull the coating off yeah that's what happens when you pull the coating off so anyway yep I make mistakes too so but it was a nice big bead I know <laughs> you gotta laugh at yourself right I kept, I kept it as a reminder clearly <laughs> all right so there's that uh, here's another, here's a crochet thing I did. Um, this is a headband and I just did a single, um, a single crochet all around, um, for my daughter. Yeah, it was a big whoops. Well, it was a big whoops. And then I was trying to undo my whoops, which made it worse. So yeah, anyway, um, this is one that I had started for my daughter. Um, but it's, this is a single crochet around a headband. And then, um, so we were going to push it around to the side, but she lost interest. So do you have those, those whips that turn into UFOs, <laughs> you know, your work in progress and it turns into a UFO, UFO. So it's like an un unidentified object. So <laughs> this is one of those. It was in that drawer. My, that's like my little oops drawer. So I actually like to keep some of that stuff. Like when it's small to kind of remind me, um, <laughs> is that weird? But <laughs> it's a small drawer. It's not very big. 
And I did keep, I kept the first um, luminate hat uh, visor that I tried to figure out on my own because at the time I could not find any luminate visor hats online. So do you like the headband idea? I actually have a video of how to do it, how to make it. Um, I just didn't finish it really, but there is a video on um, my channel. I did a long time ago, bad, bad video. I mean, as far as like quality and stuff, but you can see it. Um, and it's making it as a hairband. So if one of my admins is on here, if you find the link, I would so appreciate it. Um, if not, that's okay too. Um, uh, and I can put it on here later. So yeah, UFO. <laughs> you never heard that before? <laughs> yeah, if you don't attend to your whips, they become UFOs. <laughs> anyway, this thing I've been playing with here, um, I have a video on it. Um, but um, oh, who makes this? If the company was on here, they'd probably not be happy with me. But there is a company. I think it's Lion Brand. Anyway, they made um, a I-cord. Okay. This is a knit I-cord out of just a worsted weight yarn. And then I did a finger crochet with this. Okay. So this is, this is finger crocheted. So it's, it's four stitches wide and then you go back and forth. And so um, this is a nice um, quick project. So if you know how to um, do some finger knitting and make a big, long, long, long strand, I mean, like for like a lot of length, um, or if you want to buy the yarn like that, or if you have t-shirt yarn or something, you can make a crocheted infinity scarf or not connect it. Cause this is actually connected. It's so super bulky. It doesn't really hide, um, the thing very easily, but I just put that part on the back of my neck. And then of course this would be more appropriate in the fall, but this would be a good, Oh wait, ponytail holders could be bracelets. Yeah. The ponytail holder is what it is, but it could be a bracelet. Yeah. And you could probably do it with wire too. You just need to be careful about what kind. It probably do well with the tiger tail, actually. Lori, you've made the same scarf in the same yarn. This one? Oh, sorry. There was a jump. I had a poor connection and it stopped for a second. So I'm back. But anyway, Lori, you did it in this one. That's really funny. So yeah, so I did a video on this and um, they had a green one at the time or something. I don't even know if this is still out, y'all. I'm just telling you that you can make it like a finger knit thing. So I have videos on finger knitting. And by the way, if you know how to loom knit, really you can do different stitches like loom knitting. It just would need four, like if you're finger knitting. Um, and in any finger knitting thing, really, you could use a zippy loom if you like the zippy looms. So sorry, I digress. I'm talking about looming and I need to be talking about crochet. Um, what else? Okay. So also if, does anyone have this book? Yeah. Great minds, Ellie. Does anyone have this book or have seen this book? It's called beginner's guide to crochet motifs. Okay. So this is from leisure arts and leisure arts contracted with me. Um, we did some, um, tutorials and giveaways. They let me teach something out of this book. Now I can't teach you anything else out of here. I can't like make any more videos, but this particular one, I can show a portion of it. This particular blanket. Okay. So I taught how to do the motif on my channel. So you can find a loom, uh, a crochet along, sorry. You can find a crochet along on how to do this motif and then, um, how to connect the motifs. And of course you don't have to choose these colors. This is a three color. Of course you could make it out of all the same color. Um, but this one is called, I think it's a hexagon. Yeah. Amish hexagon Afghan. Here's the, the pretty model. Okay. So basically I taught the techniques in it. Um, you begin your hexagon motif, uh, working in chain of beginning, doing in rounds, then joining a new color and then whip stitching the motifs together. Um, it goes through it. It's considered an easy pattern and it makes a medium weight yarn with a, um, what's the hook size I five and a half millimeter or the size needed for the gauge. So like you could use whatever you wanted with an appropriate yarn. So you don't have this book. Well, even if you don't have the book and this is what the cover looks like, these are the different motifs you can get. Okay. So even if you don't have the book, watch the video and once you figure it out, I mean, you'll be able to make it. I would suggest if you enjoy the video, it's really teaching you how to read a pattern. So that's really the main reason why I did it because I wanted to be able to teach something that was in a book actually that I didn't write so that you can see another style. 
And so going through that video, rewind and pause, whatever you need to do, but go through that video and, and see the side by side when I show the pattern, because I actually had permission to show the pattern and then um, go through actually making it. So it's a really good way to learn how to read a pattern. You're going shopping. <laughs> and again, um, this video is not sponsored, this live broadcast. Um, I will have the opportunity to do that later if someone wants to sponsor something, in which case I would tell you guys and I would only be talking about that product throughout the broadcast. So uh, let's see, do you have a pattern on video how to read a chart rather than a pattern? I do not have one how to read a crochet chart. I will tell you because um, I'm so involved in the other stuff, I really haven't had time to really learn how to read one. I kind of know, but I'm not like, I'm not versed enough to like teach it. So if I know how to teach it, I will teach it. If that helps you. Um, I will one day, I have goals for myself. I will one day, just like I want you guys to learn more and do more for yourselves. I strive to learn more. There's just so much to learn, right? So, um, anyway, but if you want to learn how to do that, check out the crochet crowd, Mikey, um, you can also type in Mikey's mail, but it's like two S's, Mikey's mail, um, on YouTube. So youtube.com slash Mikey's mail, and then look at his playlists and search in his thing. You'll be at AC more tonight. We know what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's leisure arts. I can give you the ISBN if you want to know. It was when this was purchased, it was US $12.99 and for Canada $15.99. So, um, but again, it's beginner's guide to crochet motifs and it has online tutorials, um, in it too, besides mine that, um, and it tells you where to go and click or whatever. It gives you instruction for that. Um, here's some of the patterns on the back. Okay. So go buy the book. I'm not, they're not paying me to tell you that. I'm just letting you know. I let you guys know that because sometimes people get like, oh, you're only showing us stuff. So you get whatever. I'm like, no, I don't. Um, so the, um, my blog, by the way, does have some free patterns. Um, and I do have, since I'm trying to find something to show y'all, um, I do have, um, my marshmallow crochet baby blanket. It's free on the blog. However, if you click on it, you can buy it on Ravelry in my Etsy store. And what I do is that's kind of a, it really, it helps me maintain my website and some stuff. Cause just to kind of pay for that. Um, I do have ads on my website, but I don't like try to actively make money off my site. So my site really doesn't make much, but it pays for the hosting of it and stuff. So it's like a dollar ninety nine. So whenever I have a blog that's got a free pattern that's written up entirely, I just make a PDF to make it convenient for you to get offline and to print it off. But it doesn't have all the other website stuff. So if you check those out, um, I have a long list like I do of things. Yeah, yeah, Tammy, not on Kindle. Oh, this book's not on Kindle. I'm sorry, but it's a nice book to have in your hand. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you can, you can at least do that one from the video because you can tell what the pattern is. Okay. So what I'm waving around right now, this is the hook. If you saw my video yesterday for knitting and yarn, um, this is the crochet hook that I got from Wool and the Gang and actually has stamped on their Wool and Gang. It's kind of hard to read. But it's a eight millimeter and I don't, oh, I don't have my gauge thing. I, I can't remember what letter this is. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, this is like that. I think it's made out of, um, it's not rosewood, but it's like an ebony. Anyway, it's really nice. I like it. But um, this is the yarn I got from Woolen Gang. And what I didn't have, I was trying to show yesterday, is the pink. So this is the pink yarn from Woolen Gang. And I do have... Um, a link for that in the video from yesterday and I can put it up again um, and the link lets them know that I told you about it I, again I don't get anything for it but if you do click on it it'll it'll let them know that that I'm actually telling people about it because they did send me this yarn just so you know it's a roving type yarn and it crochets up beautifully and um, but anyway this is called big sexy yarn yeah cra I'm sorry crazy sexy yarn sorry I'm thinking of the hairspray big anyway but it's 100% Peruvian wool and um, they say it's made from happy sheep and made in Peru um, wool in the gang .com. and you have to spell out and see and then um, I was trying to find oh here's the color name 
hot punk pink. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tony. You love the book? Thank you. Hey, will you give me an Amazon review? <laughs> I have like one review I saw. It. I got to read it up yesterday and I'm like, oh, this is so awesome. So I'm like, oh, I hope more people do it. Um, lovely magic wand works great for crocheting. What? What, Tammy? Are you being silly? I'm not sure. Anyway. Um, okay. Oh, and then this one's moss green. So anyway, I love it. I love it. I made a, I knit a cowl out of this one and then I knit a hat out of this one and now I'm ready, getting ready to crochet something. So, oh, that's the, yes, that's the color of the hat. Yeah, this is the hat. And I made the hat. It had to use, um, cause I made it so large. I made it a slouchy. I had to use two balls. So I have a left, I have barely used one from the second ball. Um, so if you had three balls, you could make two hats. And then, um, this, uh, this one, I made that cowl out of, and I'm trying to remember how much it used. I'd have to go back to my notes, but, uh, anyway, so I've got my hook. I had it in here ready for the next project. So that's good. And then what else, what else was I going to show you? Um, finger knitting. Oh, and then if you just want to learn how to do chains, you can just make a ton of these crazy scarves, you know, if you're just trying to make something quick. I found that these were really fun teacher gifts. And so I made them. And then what we did is we crocheted a little, um, a small thing to clasp them together where this thing was. And then it basically hid this. Well, this was tied in a bow just to be goofy, but you can actually crochet a piece together and go around and, um, sorry, I have an alarm coming up to cut some watermelon. <laughs> uh, anyway, and then you make it, put it together. These were really good teacher gifts at the end of the year this past year, and my kids made them. So it was really awesome. Okay, I'm going to read comments now. Okay, I love my rosewood needles. I even say on one, broke it, and the words came out of my mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would be mad if my nice one. I lost, I actually had another one that was like, that was like this that I had gotten in um, Arizona. I went to a store and I featured it online. I was like, look what I got. Totally lost. Don't know where it is. It's gotta be in a couch. It's gotta be somewhere. Hopefully I didn't lose it on a trip. Oh, my crochet hook. Yeah, it's like my magic wand. Ding. Oh, it kind of looks like that because the sun's so bright behind me. <laughs> um, awesome about teacher gifts. Yeah, um, I like sorry, man, I've got these alarms busting up on my page. Um, yeah, the, I love crochet for teacher gifts. Um, like just quickie, quick projects are wonderful. Um, and they love the handmade stuff. They get so much of the same stuff all the time. And, um, and something for them is really quite nice. And it's not something like that has to be used for their classroom. And then they end up wearing it. Um, I tell you what, um, I actually did, um, I made a couple of hats and when they have like the lines going outside, um, you know, the, the teachers come out and they help with the, the lines that I pick up. Um, uh, I made a hat, sorry, my phone's ringing. I can't get it. Um, I made uh, a hat and I, I had had it in the car and, um, I was intending to do it as a gift, but it wasn't like I was meaning to give it right then. One of the teachers was outside in like really cold weather without a hat. And I'm like, you need this. You're doing a great job as a teacher. Here you go. And I'll tell you what, it made her day. And she would wear it when she came out to help on the other cold days and stuff. And she loved it. So anyway, just to encourage you, you know, keep an extra hat in your car this winter and pass it off to a teacher. They, they need them the most. Um, and, and they get, they, it's a thankless job a lot of times with the kids. And there's our parents who, who don't either. So that's. Sorry, that's another soapbox. <laughs> okay, does anybody have any crochet questions? And I think I'm probably going to head out here because it's been almost an hour. This is actually the longest, longest live broadcast I've done so far. So hopefully I've kept you guys engaged and, and you've um, got something good out of it. Will y'all give me a love button? Will you hit the love button if you really enjoyed what you saw today or a wow or a like or something and let me know uh, kind of uh, what, what you've enjoyed by telling me, um, it helps me for future broadcasts. 
and um, I really appreciate it. Oh, the hearts are floating. Oh, I love it. I love it. <gasps> Susie, oh my gosh, and you're on here. Did you just get here? I was about to sign off, and now I get to say hello and goodbye. You made a crochet scarf necklace for your school colors and teachers. Oh, that's an excellent idea in the school colors. And you know, um, uh, Red Heart has all those school color ones too. That would be good. Yeah, the teen color ones. That would be fun if they match your school colors. So thanks for the love, guys. Oh, I appreciate it, you ladies. I'm not sure if I had any men on here today. So anyway, oh yeah, you're welcome for the sidetrack, man. I can sidetrack. A few minutes ago. I'm so glad you joined me, Susie. You'll have to rewind and if you have time. You know, maybe these broadcasts will be good. Like y'all can just like listen. You don't have to actually watch me, but you know, just you can just crochet and or knit or something and listen to them. <laughs> just put your phone down. <laughs> so I've I've been asked about doing podcasting, but I'm like, I like video and I kind of like this. Like, is this kind of a cool thing, y'all? Like broadcasting, like where you can see me and I'm talking and because, you know, I use my hands and I blab on and on. <laughs> People who don't like to listen to me just can go somewhere else. But you guys are my fun, fun friends here. It's all about the sidetrack. Yeah, we have an article on the blog um, Carol helped me with. And it was called Side, Side Traction. I think we featured someone else on it. And it was kind of fun because apparently they get sidetracked too. Yes. Yeah, you have a terrific day too, Susie. It's cool, Tony. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys. You have a lovely, lovely rest of the day. And we will see you tomorrow if you want some YouTube or Etsy tips or Pinterest or Facebook um, for your crafty business, um, whether you are selling or you are making videos or helping stuff. So let me know your questions. You can type it on here and I can answer it tomorrow um, or you can um, send them to me um, and be sure. And um, uh, I need to turn on the message feature. So um, you guys don't let me forget. I've got to go turn on this message feature on my Facebook page. I think people are sending me at stuff at the help desk and I'm having an issue with receiving them. So you guys have an awesome day. Happy crafting. Love y'all. Bye-bye.